We're here at Air Venture Oshkosh, getting toward the end of a long week here, and it's been busy, I can tell, because around all these Technum airplanes, the grass is starting to get trampled down. That's a good sign, though. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking today with Tristan Rabb. And Tristan's going to tell us all about this airplane. We're way up high. I feel like I'm driving an SUV. I can see over the traffic. That's because we're up on a set of floats. What is it we're sitting in, Tristan? We're sitting in the Technum P92 Classic, and we have uh, Technum carbon fiber floats. Now, these are Technum made floats. Technum made floats out of uh, Italy. They're made out of carbon fiber. They displace uh, 1475 pounds of fresh water, and they're amphibs. Excellent. And this is this has a model name, I think. Sea uh, Sky. Sea Sky. So yep. you're calling this the P92 Sea Sky, then? Correct. That'd be the sort of the short way to do that. Mm -hmm. Now the P92 has been around for I think 20 plus years now, right? Yeah, a little over 20, uh, 20 years. 1992 is when it came out. So this is one of the more successful. I mean, I know Technum sells a lot of airplanes, but I'm guessing an awful lot of the total is just this one. Oh yeah. Oh or yeah. Th this model, I should this say, model. not this yep. very one. Yep. Okay, great. So. We're in a seaplane, basically, or a sea what we usually call a float plane, because mm -hmm. this has been converted from gear to floats. Two floats. They are amphib floats. Uh, amphib, amphib floats. Yep, they're air pneumatic. They have a uh, air pump with two tanks in the back, uh, one's for reserve, and the gear is all uh, actuated pneumatically. Pneumatic. Now we've heard of hydraulic, and of course some of the uh, smaller aircraft are totally total mechanical. Right. Uh, but right. air pneumatic means you gotta have a tank and you gotta you have to boost that tank periodically. Yes you do. Yes I mean, you do. Think what, of what's a, the maintenance upkeep to do that part of it. Not the repair maintenance but the operation maintenance. It's right. just uh, every once in a while typically in the morning uh, you you know you turn on the master and the air pump Ah, okay, I can hear that. Okay, so it's all on board then. All on board. You don't have to be running to the local gas station to get in some it's all <laughs> that'd be tough. So. Mm -hmm. Okay great. Yep. Uh, well, take us through some of the other controls. Now, not let's, let's sort of ignore the airplane for the moment, mm -hmm. although I always love that this airplane has, right here is one throttle, here's another one here. I always thought that's a great idea. Oh, Each yeah. of you have your own left hand throttle, oh, right yeah. hand on the joystick, pretty much conventional configuration to the airplane. Mm -hmm. But let's look at the different parts that have to do with the Sea Sky side of this guy. Absolutely. Well, first off, it's going to be differential braking. They use hand brake in this model because ah. it's lighter weight as opposed to a whole. So no, no toe brakes on this. No one. toe brakes. It's okay. a little heavier that, so they use it uh, the, the hand brake differential hand, braking. But you do, yeah, you do have differential, so you can kind of twist exactly. your hand a little bit and exactly. steer it around. And that, along with the throttle on the left hand side, it's just a matter of back and forth either side there. Once you get it lined up straight, it goes straight, nice and true. Okay. Now, does that, if you're in the water, do you still use this control? Nope, brakes are uh, only for the land, it's all rudders. Okay. Now, we do have a, a valve and back So they're here. tied on to a rudder, uh, and you've got a Absolutely. single or dual rudder back there? Dual rudder. So okay, you so you get pretty good authority then. Absolutely. Because one of the things I've discovered in a seaplane is that if you go downwind, and there's any amount of wind, uh -huh. uh, you got a little exercise on your hands. Absolutely, you have to make sure you're exactly downwind because if you get off the wind one side or the other, you weather rain right back into the wind. The big old tail does its job. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we've got the water rudders by way of a valve that, again, air pneumatic lifts them or uh, puts them back in the water. Okay, I don't know if you can see that down here, but it's a little uh, kind of a knob right in, right in front of my hand there, if you can see that now. And what is that doing for us again? That releases the water rudders. It puts them down into ah, okay. the water. Dumps them down. Now, how do you get them back up then? You simply turn the knob and suction, and just the waves, uh, the wave action pushes them back up and okay. they stay there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And once they're up, they stay up. Once so up, this is stay. just a release, basically. Correct. Okay, Correct. continue on, please, Tristan. Well, a couple of things that uh, make this particular uh, uh, a little bit different is we've got a bunch of lights down here. This is, these lights are going to tell us whether our gear is down and locked or whether it's up and locked for water landings. Also, a transition light, meaning that the pump is on along with a push to, or push to test light just to make sure that all the lights are working. I see. We, uh, we work our way up and we have the gauge. Okay, the what's the gauge, gauge showing us down here? That shows us how much air pressure we have in the system. Okay, and that's saying we got enough to do operations as you want to do them, gear up, gear down, that kind of thing. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. We have the gear switch, up and down. Okay, right here. Yep, easy Very as simple. that. Very simple. Up is up, down is down. Mm -hmm. We've got an emergency pull right here. Ah, okay. Along with the button, which we do is we put the gear down, for whatever reason it's not going down, we pull that emergency uh, pull handle out, hit the red button, and that's going to release the pressure out of the second tank to get the gear down. Uh, the second tank is just a reserve tank right. for this purpose. Then. Right, right. Okay, so all the time you kind of got some air in reserve. You back got there. redundancy. And the rest of what I'm seeing in here are regular flaps. Regular flaps. Uh, regular, of course, the dual throttles that we talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and uh, throttle lock. A little different position here than usual, but I like that it has a throttle lock. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the water run and getting off with a 100 horsepower engine up front? It's pretty good. You load it nice and light, and it'll do just fine. 656 feet okay. for the takeoff performance. So I would guess that the ground rolls maybe half that on yeah, land. It's, would it's that be about much. right? Yeah. So in which case then, 600 feet on the water, that's pretty quick, really. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what kind of cruise speeds are we coming in at uh, with the floats on it then? Well, typically it degrades at about 10 knots. I flew up here with the power back just a little bit at about 90 knots the whole way. Okay. That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. And that's backed off a little bit so you get a little that's better economy and yeah. stuff. And, and Maxed out, up, what'll it do? Oh, full forward, you can probably do about 96, 97 knots okay. indicated. Just shy of 100. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. And approach for a water landing, what, uh, 65 miles an hour? Well, I'm a big proponent of feel it in your hind end. Uh, you really got to feel the airplane out. Uh, about 60, 65, it'll slow down with full flaps in there and very controllable. But once you get start to get close, it's all about feel. And that's how I like to teach it and how I like to fly it. Now, in my experience with float planes, you kind of set them up in what I call an attitude landing. And by that, you sort of set the nose at some agreeable angle that's going to work out and then just kind of wait it out until you get to the water. Now, adjusting exactly where that is by using power rather than pitch changes. Is uh, that how you do it? No, that's more of a glassy water landing when you have no depth perception. You set yourself up much like an instrument approach. You set the airplane up to land on its own. Whereas typical operations for a normal landing, you're flying much like a soft field landing. You can see how high you are off the water. Yeah. You come on down, you level off, you start to settle, you start working that stick back. With any luck, you've got that stick all the way back just as you're touching okay. the water. Okay, so just like a wheel landing. Just yeah. like a wheel landing. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, I'm going to close the door for a moment. Sure. We've kept it open because it's not hot up here this year, thank goodness. But Oh yeah, you've got uh, looking out over there without even closing it all the way. I got great visibility down oh, yeah. here oh, to yeah. see where the floats are meeting the water. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm guessing I'm going to see the early splash line. Uh, oh yeah, right we'll when you first touch down in the water. So yeah, great stuff. Well, there's always more to ask, and uh, and I'll be looking for some more when I get a chance to go fly with you. But meanwhile, where can we get more information on the web, Tristan? We can go to technum.net. Okay, very good. And I've got lots of information about Technum airplanes. I think I've flown, well, a good many of these out here anyway. It's always another one to fly with a Technum company, it seems. And you can find all that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Tristan and I here at Oshkosh.